hey what is up youtube it's terence and i'm back with another video i've been gone for for how long now it's been it's been months maybe one maybe two no i promised y'all a new video but i've been really busy i'm just able to get around to it so sit back and let's dive into this video Alright, so that is what we're going to be making today. Let's not waste any time, let's get right to it. In Blender, we're going to click this button here and jump to our video sequencer. You're going to locate your video, drop it in, make sure you get your start and end frames right. Then we're going to export the video as a PNG or JPEG sequence. We're going to be doing this because tracking it in Blender using images is a lot easier than using video. Once your render is finished, we're going to jump over to the tracking tab. We're going to click clip, open clip, and we're going to find that sequence that you just rendered out. I'm not going to show the whole tracking process here in Blender because I learned that from Ian Hubert and CG Matter. Ian has a short tutorial and CG Matter has a whole series about tracking inside of Blender. I'm not here to reinvent the wheel, so I'm going to link these videos right here on the screen. You can go and check them out if you don't know how to track inside of Blender. I'll admit that I have tweaked what I've learned from both of them and came up with my own style in a way. So if you want to see that, you can let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on it. Once you've tracked, solved your scene and you got your orientation right, it's time to start adding in your CG. In this case, we're going to be taking the Suzanne head. We're going to be doing some animation, doing some, some cloud sims. And then we're going to be adding materials and getting that exported. Here I'm moving Suzanne to a comfortable spot that I like so I can start animating. I'm moving her down on the z-axis. I'm going to set a location keyframe. Then I'm going to move her up a few frames later and set another location keyframe. Now we've got some animation going on. You can use control 1, 2, or 3 to add subdivision levels. I've never tried using control 4 but I think that works as well. So I'm using that here to smooth out the Suzanne model. Then I'm going to be doing some cloth simulations. After turning on cloth, if I just hit play, the model is going to fall. So what I'm doing here is tapping into edit mode and I'm selecting some faces so I can make vertex groups that I will use to drive the animation. So I'm going to have these pinned and they'll follow the keyframes and the rest is going to be all cloth. Why did I make a cloth? I don't know. Don't ask me. Next I'm going to add some wind. So I can have a little bit of variation in the look. For the lighting, I'm using a single environment texture with an HDRI. This is not accurate by any means, but for the sake of time, the tutorial, and the fact that she's not casting any shadows on the ground, it should work just fine. I adjusted the light because it was a bit too bright. Then I gave Suzanne some materials, it's nothing fancy, just a red glossy texture with a bump map. Now it's time to start rendering. This is a simple affair as well, all I did here was delete the extra render layer, that way I can save on time. Pro tip, going to output properties and then post processing, you can choose here if you want to render from the sequencer or the 3D scene. That's it, render is PNG and meet me over in Fusion. Here we are in Fusion, what I'm doing now is adding two loader nodes, with this I loaded the footage and the render. I drag from the render output to the footage output, that creates a merge node, placing the render on top of the footage. I've added a mocha node here which I'm going to be using for the rotoscoping slash masking. If you guys want to see a tutorial on rotoscoping in After Effects in fusion or using mocha let me know i prefer mocha because it's fast and it stops me from throwing away my computer you guys may have noticed that i add the mocha pro node to the mountain footage that is because i want to be masking the footage and then i can apply that to the render it's business as usual here i'm going to be speeding through the entire process but like i mentioned before if you guys want, want a dedicated tutorial either on doing this in mocha like i'm doing here or you want to see how i do this in resolve or after effects let me know and I'll deliver. Now that I'm finished masking, I'm going to take the Mocha Pro node and attach it to the Suzanne clip. To make it work, all I need to do is apply the mat and set it to invert. That way it'll mask out the area where the mountain is, basically putting Suzanne behind the mountain. At this point, you're pretty much done. I made a quick garbage mat here with Polygon so I can mask out the bit of area that's still showing for Suzanne. Congrats, you're done. With that, I rendered everything out. I moved over to DaVinci Resolve. Did some really basic color grading, if you can call it that, because it was really not much. I added some sounds to it, and that is our end result. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. If you guys want to see anything else in depth that I did here, like the rotoscoping or the camera tracking, let me know, and I'll create a video. With that, I want to thank you guys once more for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see y'all in the next video.